those uh, very personal words about uh, our uh, shared friend, um, Senator Dave Durenberger. I rise today with my colleague, Senator Klobuchar, to honor the life of Senator Dave Durenberger, whom we lost, as Amy said, on January 31st. Archie and I send all our support to the Durenberger family, to Susan, Charlie and Lois, Dave and Heather, Michael and Margaret, Daniel and Jennifer, and to all of the family that loved him so well. When he was first elected to the Senate in 1978, Senator Durenberger became the first Republican senator from Minnesota in 20 years. But his political affiliation never defined him. Throughout his 16 years in service in the Senate, Senator Durenberger measured his success by doing work that helped people, not by scoring political points for himself or his party. Long before arriving in Washington, Senator Durenberger was committed to public service and committed to improving the lives of Minnesotans. He was, as Amy said, he was a proud graduate of St. John's University and the University of Minnesota Law School, and he also spent two years as an Army officer and seven more in the reserves. And later, he served as Chief of Staff for Governor Harold Lavander. When I became Chief of Staff to Governor Mark Dayton in 2010, Dave quickly called me up to offer his advice and support with his characteristic understatement and dry sense of humor. In Minnesota, Senator Durenberger was respected as a volunteer, a thinker, a doer. He was always ready to pitch in and help with a wide array of organizations that he saw were doing good work, from those dedicated to environmental protection and conservation to children's health. In the Senate, Dave built a reputation as a powerful advocate and expert on health care reform. He was instrumental in passing the landmark Americans with Disabilities Act, which recognized the civil rights of people living with disabilities. And he was an effective leader on legislation to protect our air and water, clean up Superfund sites, and protect public lands so that all of our children and grandchildren can enjoy them forever. After he left the Senate, he continued to advocate for the things that he cared about, from improving health care to protecting the environment. He became one of the nation's leading health policy experts at the University of St. Thomas and helped to mentor the next generation of health policy leaders. When I came to the Senate and uh, won a seat on the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, um, a committee that Dave also served on, he immediately reached out to me to offer support and ideas. And every year, he organized a group of young healthcare leaders through the Health Policy Center at St. Thomas to come to Washington. And I always made time to sit down and talk with them. It was, it was so great to see how Senator Durenberger continued to instill in these policy fellows the mission of diving in beneath the headlines to figure out exactly what would help make health care more accessible and affordable for everyone. When Dave was elected to the Senate, he was an independent Republican, as the Minnesota State Party was then called. He later dropped the Republican part and was a proud independent, always willing to work with both Democrats and Republicans to solve problems. He was an outspoken critic of President Trump, and he lamented the extremism in the Republican Party today. Dave always stood for bipartisanship, pragmatism, and politics that is about improving people's lives. He proudly called himself a progressive Republican. I love that. If I had to name one thing that characterized Senator Dave Durenberger, it would be his determination to find solutions to the problems that hold people back in their lives, especially problems with health care. He didn't care whether an idea came from Republicans or Democrats. He just cared about what was going to make a difference. As I reflect on his life and his time in the Senate, I'm reminded that his Midwestern brand of bipartisan, common sense, pragmatic politics, but still lives on in the Senate today. Beneath the headlines and the division and extremism, many of us on both sides of the aisle still carry on his legacy by working together to try to find common ground and solve problems. So today, as we mourn the loss of Senator Durenberger, let us take inspiration from his example of thoughtful, pragmatic, and results-oriented politics. May his memory be a blessing. Madam President, um, separately, I ask unanimous consent for Annette Christie, Holly Hanjare, 
Sindhu Nathan and Mary Parrish, all fellows in my office, to have floor privileges for the rest of the current session of Congress. Madam President, I yield the floor.